We're gonna start out with a very fun position. White to play, checkmate in three puzzle. And uh, not a very difficult one, but it will show you that in order to find this kind of combinations, you need to look at the entire board. The whole 64 squares you need to analyze to see which piece can go where. Okay, that's what you gotta try to do. So think about it. So white to play, checkmate in three moves. Make sure you're facing the, the big screen here so you can see it, okay? So it's a three move combination here that leads to a checkmate. And we are down a lot of material here. So we are down exchange and two pawns. So this is not very, uh, very good position for white unless he can come up with uh, check, checkmate in three moves. Yes, June? Knight to e7, that's very important start. Not knight to f6, because that could be taken, right? And we don't have a follow-up. So we go knight to e7 check, absolutely correct. Now he goes to h8. And now it looks like, where is the follow-up? King is simply hiding in the corner, and we don't have any concrete ideas here. But maybe we have something. Maybe we have something very special here. Okay, so let's see. Continue. Queen takes, queen takes h7. Sacrificing the queen. Whenever you sacrifice your queen, what do you need to do? Make sure. To make sure. Make sure that you're not losing material. Or not getting it. Make sure when you sacrifice the queen, because since it's the most valuable piece, you have to make sure you have a mate. Or minimum you have a perpetual. Okay? Perpetual is when you check, 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 and opponent cannot escape. Okay? Those are the two things you need to make sure. Most of the time you should look for the mate after you sacrifice the queen. But do that beforehand. Not after you sacrifice the queen. Beforehand you do that, okay? Beforehand. Now king takes h7, and now I would like to see the checkmate here. Rook to h2. Rook to h2. Swing. That's why I was saying the entire board. This is a very long range move here. Rook comes to h2 and this is a checkmate because these two squares are taken and the king cannot go there. See, the knight is guarding the squares. Knight is doing a very, very important job here. Okay, so let's do this again. So, what we start out with? The first move is, continue, yeah? Check, forcing the king to go to the corner. Check, takes, and the last move is? Look to h2, and it's checkmate. Okay, that's, that's the idea for this position, okay? Okay, now, I would like to show you a game that I played recently, and uh, this was a, a short game, not a very long game, so, against the international masters. I played d4, my first move, and my opponent played g6. So at the moment we don't know this opening yet because it depends what he will do next. So it's a short game. Only 17 moves, okay? c4, bishop g7. Do you know this opening? No. Do you know the name of this opening here? Yes? It could be, but at the moment we don't know yet. He needs to put a knight on f6, and then it will be a king's Indian. But at the moment, we don't know yet, okay? At the moment, we don't know this opening yet. Do we know it? The modern defense? Yeah, but we'll, we have to wait a little bit more. It looks like it's going to be a modern, but now, I play knight f3. If he plays knight f6, yes, we have a king's Indian defense. So he plays d6. Now we develop. Of course, if he plays the move knight f6, this is going to be which opening? King's Indian defense. 
But my opponent didn't play that. He could also play the bishop g4 move here, possibly. But he also didn't do that. So he plays the move knight to d7. Knight to d7 here. And now he's playing it passively. That means you have to try to play as active as possible here. So what's the most active move here for white? What's the most active move here for white? Since he's not playing as active, yes? E4. Absolutely, E4. Controlling more center. Now you have more center under control. Excellent. I have the entire square under my control, yeah? E4, D4, E5, D5, all the four squares that I mentioned in the previous lecture. And usually you will see me mentioning a lot about the center. It's very important for you to have the control of the center. So remember that, okay? And here, as you can see, that I have successfully controlled the center now. So now he plays the move e5, challenging the center. And now, what to do here? What should be my reaction here against e5? Because at the moment, it looks like I need to do something. But you need to be careful. You don't want to just make a quick move and then suddenly you have nothing. So you don't want to rush this, okay? You want to think it through. Think it through. <coughs> what is the best and the most active move for white? Yes? Absolutely correct. Excellent. Bishop g5. Activating the bishop and attacking the queen. Okay? That's an excellent move, bishop g5. Now the queen is under attack and he needs to, he needs to do something. Normally they play f6 here because they don't want to put a knight and get pinned. So they play the f6. f6 now attacking the bishop. Now the bishop is under attack. What to do? We need to retreat the bishop. But what would be the best square now for the bishop to retreat? Some people play bishop h4. That's true. Some people do that. But I did something a little different here. I wanted to have my bishop somewhere a little bit more central. That is protecting my center a little better. e3 you mean of course bishop to e3 protecting the center now I quite like my position here because a nice control of the center knights are out a little bit of weaknesses and the next one was very risky move my opponent should have played knight e7 here and castle he played bishop h6 he is trying to exchange his bishop and he's hoping this way he can Take away some pressure, but not easy here because he will uh, fall behind in development here. What's the best move here for white? Now he's trying to exchange the bishops here. What should I do? How should I try to respond against this move here? Yes? Yes. Queen d2. Queen d2, correct. More confidently, yes. Queen d2. You're developing your queen and now you're putting pressure on h6. Very nice. Now you want to take the bishop. So he's forced now to capture, no choice. He takes it. And now we take back with the queen. Now he plays knight e7, and black is ready to castle. And he'll have relatively safe position if he castles. Okay? Relatively safe. <coughs> now, what can you do? Because in this position, you need to come up with a strong move here to prevent him from castling. Because if he castles, he will be safe. So you need to do something 
so he cannot castle because if he castles then not as much advantage we will have yes queen h6. correct activating the queen in some point threatening to go queen g7 winning a pawn so and if he plays the move king f7 who can tell me which move is very strong here for white why he didn't play this move king f7 because it looks like it's natural it's stopping my queen from entering but what is the problem here with this move Yes? Possible. But in this position, that diagonal looks so weak here. If we can somehow get a bishop on that diagonal, that will be extremely strong. See? We want to get that bishop on that diagonal and give him a check. See? That check will be very strong here. C5? Of course, C5. And now he takes. Look at this one. Check. And now he goes back, you take, and you can put the rook on d1, queen comes into g7, this would be a checkmate pretty soon. So that's why he didn't want to do that. So he plays the move c6. Now, what is the best move here? The most energetic and active move here for white. most energetic and active move as well yes well maybe the same move c5 and then you can still move the bishop out yeah, it's possible. It's possible to play c5 here still. I did that a little bit later because I wanted to do have something here first. To have a little bit better development here before I play c5. So this one is a developing move. c5 may work as well here. But let's try to get a little bit more development first. A little bit more development first. Castling. Where? Castling. Where? Which? Long side. Long side. Castle, queen side. Absolutely correct. Now our rook is on a D file here as well. And we are ready to put pressure and ready to open up the D file. Okay? So there are some concrete threats now he needs to deal with. So my opponent uh, played the dangerous move queen B6 here. risky looking move how how we can take advantage of it now he played it risky but now how we can take advantage of this and break through because he's tempting us now tempting us to do some breakthrough yes You could do pawn c5, perfect, attacking the queen, but now he takes it. If you take back on c5, he just takes back with the queen, perhaps, and he's, he's, he's up a pawn. Yeah, but what, what's the follow-up? What should I do here? I don't want to take back on c5. What do I want to do instead? Knight a4. Could do that, but then he plays queen a5, maybe. Knight on the rim, you know. Knight on the rim is not very good. So we don't want to do that. Um, he takes e5? Of course, we take the other direction. d takes e5. We want to leave him with this double pawn here and open up the d file. See, now we open up that d file here. 
d takes e5. Now he plays knight takes e5. Now what's the idea? Yes. Queen G7. Queen G7 you could, yeah? You could do that. But the knight is very strong, so what else you can try to do here? This knight needs to be eliminated, right? Yes? Very good. Now he takes back. Knight takes c5, he takes back. And now we need more development here. We can't just win this game with a queen and rook. We need more development. A little bit more development will be very useful here. Yes, Ben? Bishop c4. Absolutely. Very active and a natural move you're making. And now you're controlling this diagonal. Okay? And he has a hard time now developing his bishop. Because he can't go to e6. If he goes to g4, he runs into f3. So it's very dangerous. What to do? If he goes bishop d7, you have queen g7 ideas. Okay? So he plays queen c7, defending everything. At least for a moment, it looks like he's defending the attack. But now the game will end in two more moves here. If you play this precisely, two more moves, and he resigns. Two more moves here. Yes? Correct. Rook is under attack. Cannot go to g8 because, see, that's why we brought the bishop here, controlling it. So he has only one move left here to go rook f8. And here I was thinking to come up with a slow plan, maybe like rook d2, rook a d1, and win the game. But while I was thinking about that, I realized I have another idea. And this idea is very spectacular and just wins the game immediately here. So let's see if you can find that move here. The move that wins the game here on the spot. On the spot you win the game. He didn't even play a single move after that because it was just clear that it's just a hopeless position. Don't rush yet, think. Make sure you have it. Yes? Um, bishop to um, g8. Um, the bishop g8 he, he might be able to take because he has a knight also. So he has two on it. So he might be able to take that. Tactical idea. Okay, I see many hands here. Many hands. Let's see. Yes. Rook takes. King, king takes. So we lose some material there, yeah? Not necessarily, not necessarily what we want to do. Something better you have. Something very powerful, yes. Knight takes g8. See, he has a knight here. He has a knight here and he will take it. Yes? Queen to d8? Isn't that a free rook? We need something. We need something special. We are very close. It feels like. It feels like should be winning, but you need to find that the final touch. Touch. Archie. Knight to b5. Knight to b5. Correct. Now, attacking the queen. If the queen moves anywhere, queen. What's the idea? 
deadly, deadly knight d6 check, because next you take on f8. He can't do anything. So knight is very strong on d6. Knight lands on d6, this game is over, OK? So knight b5, now queen moves, knight d6 check. So the only thing he can do is take it. Follow it up now. Continue. Check. What are the options here? Knight to c6. Knight to c6 loses to which move? The queen. Loses the queen. The game is over. Then rook d8 checkmate, actually. So he has to go bishop to d7. And now queen takes, winning the queen and winning the game as well. Correct. Or we can take back with the rook, probably a little bit more precise. Okay. So yeah, after I played 95, my opponent resigned because he couldn't do anything. So this is what happens when you play some risky opening with block. Very quickly you can find yourself in trouble. Okay. And uh, and block lost very quickly. So okay, now let's do one end game position before we start our uh, practice games. Okay, our friendly matchups. So I want to show you this end game here, very important to remember. Some of you might have seen this before. It's uh, white to play and draw. You are down a pawn, and normally in a king and pawn endgame, that's not a good news. It's likely you're going to lose the game if you're down a pawn. But here, actually, you can, make, you can make a draw here if you know this idea. There's only one way for you to make a draw here, but you have to know this idea. It's not a natural idea. You have to study this, or you have to figure out the way you can make a draw here. Because you are down a pawn. And it's something to do with the opposition, because if you lose the battle of that opposition, he will win the game. So you have to make sure you have that opposition. So what is the move here to have the opposition? Yes? King to f2. King to f2, the problem is he goes king hd2. And I think he's going to get the opposition because if you go here, he goes here. And he goes here. And he gets behind you. King f2 and takes. Okay? So that's the idea here. King f2, he goes king d2. Now, what do we do to get the opposition here? Yes? King to h1. From the first glance, it looks like a strange move. But in fact, this is the only move that will hold the draw. What is this idea called? Distant opposition. Distant opposition, everybody. Remember, distant. Odd number of squares between the, each king on the same line or diagonal, that's an opposition. But here we have three of them. That's a distant opposition, OK? Remember that, distant. If there are three squares, that's distant. If it's only one square, it's a regular opposition. Now, he comes up. What you got to do is you got to keep that distant opposition continuously. Continue. King to h3. King d3. King to h3. There you go. He comes closer. closer. You come closer. He comes here. He comes down. You come down. That's how it works. Okay? He comes back. You come back. He comes up. Same way. Keep that distant opposition, okay? This is very important. He goes back. Now he goes G4. Last try. Last attempt here to confuse the matters. You go wrong here, you're going to lose. You cannot go wrong here. You will lose. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. Yes? 
pawn takes, but then, then he pushes. See? You push, I push. And guess what? I queen with a check. Okay? So be careful, remember, be careful. This is the moment. You cannot go wrong. You cannot afford to go wrong here because he will queen with a check and win the game. So what are we going to do instead first? What are we going to do instead? Absolutely king g2. Now he takes, we're going to take, we're going to go king e4, take the last pawn and draw. And if he goes now king d2, what do you do? Um, now what can you do already? Um, king f2. Don't rush. King f2 you lose, he takes on f3. And king d3 he has. Now something has changed, your king is no longer on that back rank. So you can check you. So what can you do now? Yes? Same thing, he takes. And you will lose because he starts pushing this guy. So now there is a difference here. In the, there you should notice the difference. The king is no longer on h1. Yes? And I push? You push, 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 push. See? No longer he checks us. So we queen and it's a draw. Okay? So no longer he checks us. That's why King G2 is winning a crucial tempo. So he can no longer. So remember that. So you start out with. And then the only way to lose for you to play would be to make King Yeah. So King H1, he comes up, you come up. Comes up, you come up. Okay. Yeah, you just if it goes here, you just come up here. Don't take, you take, you lose. If he takes on f3, king takes, and you go king e4, king e5, and if it goes here, you take. You take, sorry. And you push. Okay? Alright, excellent job. So we did we saw one of my games, the short game, 17 moves. And with a couple of puzzles, so just remember this end game, okay? Very important, distant opposition. And uh, in the game I show you, if opponent is not playing uh, main opening, playing something obscure, you have to be ready to play as aggressive as possible, okay? If you're white. And try to open up the position when you have good development. Mm -hmm.